source IP anchoring. So at the moment, my client connector is connected to my um, Cscaler Internet Access private service edge, and I'm on the trusted network. Um, and so if I browse out to the internet and I go to ipchicken.com, it sees my public IP address as 8178.74.17. Come over here, let's um, turn the Wi-Fi off. We'll turn it back on again. And we'll connect to my uh, phone so I get a, um, a hotspot IP address which is not on my network. If I open up um, Zscaler Client Connector, we can see now it's connected to the public service edge. Private access is connected, talking to the public service edge. And so if I refresh this page for IP Chicken, you see that it sees my IP address as 165.225.16.121, which is a Zscaler public IP address um, of one of our data centers in the UK. So if I'm accessing a website that needs to um, apply policy based on my source IP, of course now it's going to see the Zscaler IP address, which is a multi-tenant environment. So let's think about how we uh, pass traffic through the Zscaler Internet Access Service Edge, apply all of the inspection capabilities, but then pass from the Zscaler um, Zero Trust Exchange back to a app connector in Zscaler Private Access to give me that source IP um, that I need to access that service. So let's start with Private Access and we'll come into Administration, Application Segments, and um, we'll go ahead and we'll add an application segment and we'll call it uh, IP Chicken. Um, and we'll go star.ipchicken.com and it's, uh, it's a website so it's port 80. Uh, we'll also add in port 443 because that's all we need. Um, it's kind of forwarding policy um, to control that and uh, everything else is uh, the default and we'll, um, we'll add a segment group well we'll use a default segment group here it's a browser so that'll be fine um, we'll select the server group of DC discovery because we're going to send it through our um, app connector in the data center um, and we'll click save And I don't need to worry about any access policy, um, so we'll cancel that. And we'll come across to our client forwarding policy. And I'm going to add a, a client forwarding policy rule because I don't want my client to, to get this. Um, so we'll call it IP Chicken. And we'll say bypass EPA for the app segment and the application segment. It's called IP Chicken. And the reason we bypass this from the client is we don't want the Zscaler client to know about this segment. We want the client connector to, to, to think it's still a public IP or public FQDN, send it to Zscaler Internet Access, and Zscaler Internet Access is going to handle the forwarding through the private service edge, um, through the, the service edge for private access um, to the app connector, and the app connector is going to give us the synthetic IP. So at this point, um, you know, everything's uh, still working as before, still going to Zscaler Internet Access. We've just made the definition in private access. Private access isn't doing any interception of this because of that client forwarding policy. We need to edit that application segment. Here's our IP chicken. We'll click edit on this. We'll click next. And we want to enable it for source IP anchor. And so enabling it for source IP anchor means that it's um, available for the internet access um, platform to apply policy on. So we come across to the Zscaler internet access portal here and we'll go administration, Zscaler private access, and we can add a gateway for Zscaler private access. So the server group 
we select is DC Discovery and we see this application segment IP chickens being created. And we'll call this um, uh, uh, IP chicken. Um, or we'll click save. So now we've created a definition for that IP chicken um, application segment um, to pass it through the, discover, the server group for DC Discovery, which selects that um, private service, um, that uh, app connector for Zscaler private access. So now all we need to do is create a policy. So we come to policy, forwarding control. We'll add a forwarding rule. Rule one, admin rank seven. Forwarding rule name is called IP chicken. It's enabled. Forwarding method is ZPA. And then we can just say destination. Um, the application segment is IP chicken and forward to the gateway that we just defined called IP chicken. Click save. And we click activate. What we'll do is we'll close down this tab because we want to get a new DNS entry for it. We'll go to ipchicken.com and we can see that it's now passing with my source IP address of 81787417. Um, and we can then come into the um, uh, analytics and we can go web insights, logs for the last five minutes and we click apply filters. Um, and let's um, filter this, make sure we, uh, well, let's, um, let's actually just zoom out slightly so we can actually see the, the traffic. Let's add a filter, uh, URL search, host contains chicken by filters and we can see that the traffic flowed through um, Zscaler internet access because we did all of the filtering here and if we scroll across um, to the right let's do uh, Client IP information. Server IP, client IP, client external IP. This is my IP address um, from the tethered network. Um, at this point, it didn't hit any forwarding rules. So let's. Uh, by the last two minutes and click apply. And uh, here we can see the rules. It triggered on the ZPA IP chicken. Even though my public IP was still 148 and 104, uh, being the server IP address, um, it then tunneled it using the ZPA forwarding mechanism through the IP chicken forwarding rule um, to egress out through my uh, app connector with this IP address.